Welcome everyone. In the last video we have seen installation of TestNG with Eclipse and we ran two test cases through TestNG. So far we have created one package and in the, that package we have created one test class named as base test class and in this class we have created two methods with annotation at the rate test and we ran these test cases through TestNG and the order of execution was both the test cases executed and both are passed. Right, so we'll extend this discussion further and we go to the official documentation of TestNG. We go to this documentation part and this was the introduction part which we have covered and the second topic is annotations. So the main power of TestNG is in annotations. So we need to go through all these annotations one by one and we'll see how these actually work. We have so far seen one annotation which is at the rate test. So before we see more annotations, let us create one more test class here. New class and name it as page one class or page one test class. We are trying to create one class for one page let's say or one module let's say and we are saying that we'll be having page level test cases in this page class. Okay, so I add another method here public void 3 test 3 and on console print 3. Okay, so we have test 1, test 2, and uh, let's make uh, this name similar. We can also copy and paste and put it like this so instead of 2. 3 okay so we have three test cases now two test cases are here and one test case is here okay now let's run the test cases and this time i'm running i'm clicking on the package not on a one class individually i'm running these test cases with test ng let's see what is the output so it says that total three test cases ran test one test two test three and here is the output that all three test cases passed. Alright, so we ran our test cases in this format so far that we have two test cases in class 1 which is base test class and we have one test case here in class 2 which is page 1 test class. Now I want to make this base test class as parent class and this class as child class. So for sake of simplicity I am renaming it to A. And I am going to say that A is child of this base test class. And also I rename it to parent. So A is child and parent is this. Okay. So we say here, let us build the parent child relation using extends. So A extends parent. Okay. Now let us run this class only. So we are running test class A. We are not running the package. So how many test cases should run? It ran three test cases. One test case that is present in the child class and two test cases which ex it extended from the parent. So that's why all three test cases ran. What if we run the parent test class? Only two test cases will run and those test cases would be of the parent only. Alright, so this is how inheritance works here. Let us create one more test class here and name it as B. And let's say B extends base or you can say parent. And we have another fourth test case here in B. Right? So Test case 1 and 2 are in parent, 3 is in A, 4 is in B. Let us run test class A. If we run A, we have seen earlier 3 test cases ran 1, 3 and 2, right? This order can be anything, doesn't matter whether uh, you are having your test cases in parent or child. There is no such rule that these test cases will run in one particular order. It can run in any order. 
if we run test class b with test ng the test cases of b and parent will run so test case 1 2 and 4 will run if we run test classes a and b together by selecting these two test classes so how many test cases would run ideally we were expecting that 3 from a 4 from b and 1 and 2 from parent 4 test cases should run but here it is showing 6 test cases so what is the reason because when we ran a test class it extended parent so one test case of this and two of parent three test cases executed for this execution and when we ran b one test case was here in b and two from parent so that's why three test cases executed here so total six test cases so parent test cases were executed twice so that is the reason it is showing us six test cases an important thing that we have noted here is we should not ideally keep our test cases in the parent class now what is the purpose of this parent class then? We will go through further annotations and we will see why we have these classes. So for the time being I am keeping 1, 2 and 3 here in test class A and 4 test case in B. And parent is blank let's say. Let us open test change annotation page and we have more annotations like before suit, after suit, before test, after test, before groups and after groups, before class and after class before method and after method so we'll go through all these one by one so stay connected and i'll see you in the next lecture